Good morning, everyone. We're Team Mosaic, diverse by nature, and brought together with a shared passion for innovation and progress. Important to us and weaved throughout this presentation is a shared understanding that open banking can be a force for good and importantly, an opportunity for improved financial inclusion. We come from backgrounds in investment management, design thinking, and legal and compliance, and we've come together to understand reality. So what is reality? We wanted to understand open banking and the various different edge cases and the various different elements that surrounded this complex term. We wanted to frame the problem essentially. And from framing the problem, we really gleaned three important insights. One, when we speak about individuals with irregular income, we're really speaking about a spectrum of individuals that, are, that span age, literacy, and financial health. Second, when we speak about budgeting and services, we're really speaking about personalization and how important that is for every individual that is meaning how to best do their budgeting and services. And lastly, we're talking about engagement and how important it is an underpinning narrative for an individual with irregular income and their engagement with government, financial institutions, and fintechs. To help us understand our audience and humanize the upcoming research, we present Dave. Stuck, stuck between two worlds, the analog adolescence and digital adulthood. The American dream and the promise of ever increasing prosperity tied into higher education, which never materializes. Instead, laden with school debts, in need of a permanent home and facing ever increasing living costs, David now takes on additional work to pay back loans and save up a down payment towards his own house. Here is somebody who is highly educated, financially literate, but unable to execute their future strategically. Often, people like Dave are so involved in their effort day to day that they fall into the category of the economically vulnerable. There is effectively no auxiliary plan for the unforeseen. Their strategies remain fixed in the past. Our research must answer three critical criteria if we hope to provide OBIC with key insights. Building on the current global strategies and learning from the success stories of other regulatory frameworks. How might we leverage open banking to improve financial inclusion and financial literacy for those financially vulnerable? How might we enable gig economy workers to access the best financial services tailored to their needs? And how might we develop an open banking framework that optimizes the relationship between governments, financial institutions, and innovators? So let's understand, before we share our research and uh, insights and as well as our research, we wanted to share and understand what did Canada and what does Canada's challenges and constraints represent? Our key insight that we'd like to leave with the audience right off the bat is that successful implementation of open banking in Canada will occur at the intersection of stakeholders. What does this really mean? Well, in the context of Canada, we have a bifurcated regulatory landscape where federal and provincial governments play important parts in consumer protection, privacy, and data legislation. This relationship is quite important in understanding how to implement open banking in Canada. Second, privacy legislation in Canada is outdated, period, full stop. And so we need to explore amendments and how might we be able to improve our privacy legislation in order to meet the ideas of open banking. We can glean insights from GDPR in the EU and understanding how this could improve PIPTA in Canada. And then lastly, it's not without surprise that Canada's banks and financial institutions are some of the most well-renowned and respected across the globe. So, to preserve the global financial system in Canada. So, taking all of the Canadian context and our research and a variety of different aspects, what are our insights and what are our recommendations? Well, we have three key insights that we'd like to leave with everyone today. First, this needs to be government involved and government led. There needs to be regulations and standardization, improvements to uh, privacy. There needs to be a phase of food. But ultimately, government needs to be a stakeholder in driving open banking. Forward. Second, and then a really key insight and interesting for our team, was that behavioral economics has a very important role to play in this picture. Canada, of all the G7 nations, spends the lowest amount on research and development. Well, we need to change them. Behavioral insights will allow us to approach design thinking and user-centric design in a much more wholesome way to allow for users and individuals to be at the center of creating open banking and, and services for a community. And then lastly, at the intersection of financial health and inclusion is the idea of financial health. We need to bring a key focus to financial health in order to drive this narrative forward. 
In giving global context, we noted that the open banking movement has rapidly gained momentum with examples of adoption coming from all geographical areas. Countries that have implemented open banking use various models. From our analysis, we found that some countries use regulations-led approach, others use a market-led approach, and others combine both models. In Europe and the UK, it was regulations-led. In Asia Pacific, it was regulations and market-led. And in the US, they are, they are taking a market-led approach. On the other end, in Africa, it is regulations-led, and Oceania region combines both a market and regulations-led approach. From this representation, you can see where countries sit, where Canada currently is, and where it should be in the near future. There's opportunity for Canada to benchmark against other peers, which are similar in nature, such as Mexico, UK, and Kenya, while still being cautious, given its own unique financial system. The pros and cons of each model are highlighted in our report. Our analysis also showed that some countries use a phased model of implementation and others use an all-in model. Mexico has open banking regulations for only their financial services, while Australia is regulating the financial services and the energy and communication sectors too. We observe that in open banking, regulators in these jurisdictions have one thing in common, ensuring the challenges of security, liability, and lack of education and awareness on open banking capabilities are solved through regulation and policy. Many lessons are noticeable for other regulators, banks, and fintech companies as they pursue their own open banking initiatives. Canada can avoid some of these mistakes as it prepares to implement open banking. This can be achieved through ensuring a reasonable time frame to allow for changes to its complex financial system, enabling synergies of open banking platforms, encouraging competitive flexibility, and continuously educating the public on changes occurring to, open, to, to banking services. In order to supplement our research, we, conduct preliminary, we conducted preliminary interviews. One common theme brought up was the complaints of feeling overwhelmed by the system and having too much information. UX design will play a significant role in solving open banking. No matter what the regulatory landscape becomes in Canada, one of Team Mosaic's recommendations is to create a financial health dashboard. This dashboard's function is to provide a central place where Canadians can set personal goals and have tools provided to ensure success. As shown here in this mock-up, we do not focus on credit scores, but alternatively, provide a full breakdown of credit health and give the consumer a choice on how to connect and share data. As a result, the consumer can involve as many institutions and innovators in their financial management and consolidate solutions as their needs and goals change. Most importantly, the data displayed on the dashboard also lives on as a record owned and controlled by the consumer. What does Canadian financial look, uh, landscape look like in five years from now? Without quick action by the Canadian government, banks and other institutions will have to react to global pressure. Moreover, innovators will remain limited to the types of services without a framework to manage data. And as a result, attracting new investments will continue to lag behind the other G7 nations. Team Mosaic envisions a market led by government regulators ensuring unprecedented data security and focused on augmenting the trusted big six with innovators. Canada has an opportunity to pull ahead and lead in research into behavioral economics. Canada's talent in this area is world-class with top academia at University of Toronto, McGill and the University of British Columbia. In conclusion, how can we improve budgets and services? It's by focusing on government involvement, user engagement and financial health. As Team Mosaic, we've identified two next steps to further research. One, we need to continue interviewing Canadians to understand how they experience financial services. And second, developing a phased open banking implementation strategy for Canada. Thank you.